we're not at the mercy of mainstream media anymore. Like, we're all part of the media now. We've got everyone's got a, a video camera in their pocket, and uh, right. we're all connected to the World Wide Web. So um, we're all sharing information, and uh, so the the, the, pow the power shifted, and we're we're all part of the the, the media now. And so you can see, like with the Black Lives Matter uh, movement that's happening in, globally at the at present, um, initially you'd see mainstream media come in and 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 paint a picture that you know uh, portrays uh, portrays us negatively. But then the truth eventually gets revealed yeah. and, and you see oh it's actually um, far-right groups coming in and starting rioting and looting and oh there's police attacking peaceful protesters and mainstream media um, journalists it's and, and so and now there's so much video footage of that now that you know ignorance is a choice you know it's 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 everywhere and so and that's a powerful thing that they, they can't fool us collectively anymore because we've got too much technology at our hands and, and it's the filming. You look at Rodney King, George Floyd, it's the filming of police assaulting and, and murdering us um, that is, is making it all come to justice and, and making the world aware that there's institutionalised racism. It, a lot of the systems in place were founded by white supremacists, slave owners, people who were invading countries and, and, uh, and stealing everything. And, it's, and a lot of that attitude and um, and people benefiting from what's put in place is still happening today and we need to change change all that on a fundamental level you know the the police need to be completely reformed completely tested anybody who's who's racist sexist homophobic transphobic xenophobic misogynistic etc etc they need to be out of the police force yeah. we can't have anybody with those types of and i, I call them mental illnesses well, that, those types of prejudices we can't have them People carrying guns with those types of prejudice is, is not safe for us as a community. We need to make these fundamental changes. We need to pass legislation and um, we need to take the power back. You know, it started off as something simple when he's going over $20 to, to cash in a cheque and then the person working there calls up the police and it, and it sort of spirals downwards. I think the world was really shocked. I don't think this is the first time excessive force has taken place. And if you look at the statistics that Danny quoted, you know, in the last 30 years, over 400 people have died in Australia in police custody, and I believe that was more indigenous people. So, you know, I think just the mentality of people have to change, and um, it's it's really sad to see. Um, I don't think it justifies people going to to do looting, going to stores, and you know, trashing police cars and saying let's defund the police. You know, I think it's a time of change, but definitely. Um, we need to look at educating people and, and having the remove the um, biases and prejudices. So what about you, Jomar? Well, it's uh, definitely a very big topic because uh, from my understanding, this comes all from all the way up or it's something in the culture. That's why it's very hard to, to get rid of it or to remove it. The only reason why we hear about George Floyd and the other, uh, forgive me, I don't know, their, their, I don't remember their names, but the reason why such event uh, is a big thing or recorded is because uh, as we spoke about uh, mobile phones and everyone's got cameras and that's the only reason why it was exposed but there's people that do things like this all the time yeah, and I don't think that yeah, was his you know first time or his mm. last time because mm. to do such an action to you know uh, put your knee on someone's throat or someone's neck to squeeze the life out of him mm. you must have been doing that many times and you have to have hatred for that mm. person because you know, even uh, I know a lot of people that go to farming areas and, and and they slaughter animals for festivals and things like that. They do it with mercy, you know, they do it with mercy. But the statistics are only showing the deaths and um, this, there's, the, there's the beat downs, there's the, um, the hospitalizations, there's the ongoing health problems from, from really bad beat downs. These, these are people that survived um, police brutality, but they are um, paying for it for the rest of their lives, and and the the psychological trauma. That's you know, the worst. There's the, there's, the already, the there's already there's uh, already uh, uh, a fear of like you know you see you see the police and it's just like oh if there's a tail light out a police officer might approach someone who in an expensive car or is is you know white or whatever and sort of go, oh your tail lights out just letting you know, whereas it's a brother it's just like right. 
you know, mm, we're searching you. We're, we're searching giving you, you a, giving you a, a, a work order f f uh, certificate for the vehicle, and you're going to search you and breathalyze you and all this sort of stuff. And you automatically put in a box mm. when you come with a, with an ethnicity with, yeah. with a different skin tone. You automatically put in that box, and like you were saying before, that there's a whole reform that needs to happen through the structure from the top down, through the politicians coming yeah. down to the police. Uh, they need a little bit more cultural diversity or training in such areas yeah. to be a bit more diverse, to get more of an understanding of the people they're dealing with. You know, I mean, we, we as Australia, we, we there's so many cultures in Australia, mm. but alone the first culture, the Aboriginal culture, is, you know, be, is being discarded like, yeah. quite somewhat. Yeah, and my, my children are Aboriginal, you know, and, and I want all my kids to be able to look up and say, you know, hey, the police are okay. Mm. They're here to protect me, not yeah. my, my kids to say, oh my God, are they coming for me or my father again? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ab Aboriginal people should be the wealthiest people in this country. That's right. Yeah. You know, essentially, it's their land yeah. and, and it's, it's rich land. Why are they not the wealthiest? Why are they the poorest? Why are they living in fourth world conditions? As a, as a, um, the, nothing can be given back, not even, a, you know, sorry has been heard enough. We've heard yeah. it enough. We've heard it enough. Yeah. Um, what needs to happen is, like you're saying, the reform. Yeah. Um, it, needs to start, it needs to start big. And I think, you know, everyone's trying to go into politics. We've got, we've got certain elders that have gone into politics and they're still not heard. Mm. But if we were together to stand together as a people yeah. and really shut things down, you know, things might change in the direction that's a more positive future for, for Indigenous cultures. You spoke at um, the, uh, the rally today, didn't you? The Black Lives Matter yeah, rally. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, spoke how that, that yeah. for you? Yeah, it was, it was very emotional. I've, I've sp spoken at a lot of rallies yeah. over the years and uh, that was the most emotional one to speak at. Um, okay. the, reason, the reason why was because leading up to that and after that as well, there was um, uh, a huge amount of racism surfacing I've, I was noticing, especially online. Yeah. Uh, I'm quite spoken, outspoken online and I, I stand up for all beings. And um, I just was noticing uh, the rhetoric of the all lives matter thing, which was basically people saying, you know, I'm ignorant and I'm going to hold on to my ignorance. And that if, and when you challenge that, the cognitive dissonance just rises up in them and they just, they sometimes get very aggressive. And it's just like, look, I'm just trying to educate you yeah. about how this is racist. And not only are they not prepared to, to listen to a person of color, talk about something that they've never experienced, that we've experienced every day of our life, but they're actually getting angry. Yeah. And it's just, it's just ridiculous. The and a friend of mine spoke out and he says that he realizes he has privilege, that he can hide his homosexuality. But people of color, we can't hide our color. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think it's an individual thing because you know, it's, it's in the system because I'm sure the supervisor knows what's going on. I'm sure there's someone in there knows mm. what's going on, but the, the, the issue is, what I, are they doing about it? You see, when you see something mm. wrong, yeah. what do you do about it? About it, do you cover it up or do you uh, um, yeah. do you move on? Dust yeah. it under the carpet. You know I mean? Yeah, it's not good enough mm. to be non-racist. Being non-racist is just a smaller form of racism. Yeah, we all much. collectively have to be anti-racist. You know, like if 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 we were walking down the street and we saw an old woman being attacked, right? It's not good enough to just walk past and go, "Well, I'm not attacking her." We have to step in and help her. You know what I mean? And that's what being anti-racist is. officer who had his knee on the, on the guy's neck and he said, I can't breathe. Yeah. The officer had 18 infringements or 18 warnings prior to this incident. And only two times he was, you know, reprimanded. reprimanded. Right, so he's so got a history. They, he had a clear history. Why did yeah. they let him continue? Exactly. And, and, and what's, exactly. where is the failure going on? Yeah. And, and definitely, I think people that get into power, um, they can easily lose focus I think of, of what's important but sometimes it's not our fault we get culturally conditioned and programmed a certain way and if you look at it from the media from video games you know kids these days are playing GTA Grand Theft Auto yeah mm. encouraging yeah, yeah, yeah. crimes encouraging speeding yeah. encouraging shooting and a lot of the movies are about killing so people are desensitized to violence and and the everyone's got an access to a gun almost in America until mm. recently you could just go buy it from Walmart or Kmart mm. so it's, it's, I had some American um, colleagues I used to work with offshore and I used to ask them, I said, you know, what's this deal with the guns? Because I don't understand it in here. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, well, if something goes wrong, I'm not going to wait for the police to come. It might take them five minutes, 10 minutes. He said, I need to protect myself. It's a martial law thing, isn't it? Yeah. You know, they've got the right to bear arms. And he says, I need to protect myself. I need to carry a gun. And I said, 
maybe there is a bit of logic to that. But then if you have a gun, you're more likely to use it. Yeah. Mm. And so why are these officers using their guns right away? Why don't they use, you know, uh, BB guns or the stun guns or that people resort to violence too quickly? Was it necessary for him to put his knee on the neck if he was already restrained? And there yeah. was many, many officers around there. There's and three of them holding him down. Correct. Mm. So apparently this officer has been um, charged for third degree murder, which has now been upgraded to second de degree murder. Yeah. And um, a plea deal didn't go through and now it's going to go to, to trial. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the trial, you know, it's either all or nothing. If it's a plea deal, you're going to say that you're guilty. So. And why, why is it that, that people, like the police, feel so threatened by a black man? I mean, you've got, you see groups of white men with machine guns and the police are totally fine with that. One unarmed black man and a group of policemen, and they're just like, yeah. you know. I I'll always say it's in the system, it's in the culture of the system. They turn a blind eye, they let such things Definitely. happen because, you know, you have people like Pauline Hansen, for instance, the things, the rubbish that she says. Mm -hmm. They're all aware of what she says, but yet she is, she is in the, she does yeah, get to say that in the parliament. Yeah. You know, she's yeah, yeah. given a voice. They allow her, so they're all guilty. Racism, mm. They are all guilty yeah. because yeah. if they know it is wrong, why they can't? Yeah. The fact that they're allowing that, it's like the plebiscite. How dare they ask, in the 21st century, how dare they ask us if, if gay people and the LGBTQIA plus community should have the right to marriage. How dare they ask us that? Mm -hmm. You know, like the fact that they're asking us that is sort of saying, we're just letting you know that we're still oppressing you, yeah. but we're gonna just, how much are we gonna oppress you? We're deciding. Yeah, you take know? the squeeze the, off a bit. Yeah. The mm -hmm. fact of the matter is that, that there's been, there'd been so many more black deaths in custody, so much more oppression on the black man around the world mm. for fucking hundreds of thousands of years man mm. it hasn't it, it, it's not going to stop anytime soon and the thing is when people say all lives matter it's a it's a bullshit statement but it's it's diluting the subject so when someone says black lives matter the subtext which we shouldn't have to explain to anyone who's got two brain cells to rub together and get a spark the subtext is people in power like the police force government departments and the whole system is basically making a statement that Black lives don't matter because we're being oppressed and we're not having access to loans and education and housing and healthcare, the same as what white people have. So, and we're getting murdered by police and abused and, and, and you know, harassed constantly. And so it's, it's, it's just so obvious and it's hard to grasp how people can't understand this fundamental principle. It's like if, 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 if someone's gasping for air and, and they're saying, I need air, I need air, and someone goes, well, we all need air. That is a cruel statement to make. The person who's, who's being strangled, they're the ones that need air right now, and we are the ones being strangled. We're being strangled by a system that's, that's racist. You hear more about the back of black yeah, Exactly. The is because of what the media want us to Exactly. Hear. It's not what's, exactly. what's really going on out there. The problem is, the, the media is making it out that, and this is their agenda, this is what I believe their agenda is that black lives don't matter mm. as a minority, as we never have done exactly. since the slave trade yeah. started. Yeah. Our people, whether, whether you, you know what I mean, whether you're from, you black Australian, black Egyptian, black African, we are like, we've never been treated equal in this world, ever, yeah. Yeah. ever. And it's, be, it, you know what, they're carrying on this trade, this is just another form of slavery. Yeah. This is another form yeah. of slavery. It's, it's just, a, yeah, and that's another form of racism. That state, all lives matter, that is a racist statement. Right? Most people know that now. It's been hijacked. Do you think so? yeah. the terms have been hijacked? Or that's, that's you, the you can, itself? You can say that in a different context, but when you say in, in response to Black Lives Matter, it's a racist statement. Yep. Yeah. And most people know that now. Anyone who doesn't know that now, need, we need to educate those people, yeah. right? Because we need to move past this. You know what I mean? And, and um, this, this whole rhetoric of, like, what about black on black crime? Or what about the, 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 the um, criminal record of, of uh, any black person who's murdered by police. What's that got to do with anything? You know, the, the, the difference is, is that when people are killing people, regardless of their colour, right, that's bad, right? But when the people who are in a position of power, that are armed, that, are, that have the, the upper hand in a court of law, like the police department do, who are, who are there to protect us, when they're killing us, that's next level. That's completely different. Can I ask you, Danny, for example, do you feel having more people of colour in the police force makes any difference? No. Oh, de no. I, I think it does. I oh, think it does. I, 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 I don't.
The reason being is I've, I've been incarcerated for 15 years and um, I've had, you know, black brothers of mine, which are, you know, in the police force, just beat the living piss out of me. For the simple fact being is I should have learned. But hold on a second, the trauma that I've, I've got is intergenerational. It's, it's come down. So they get off their high horse and treat me like crap because I've stuffed up and done something wrong and now I get a hiding from them not only because of my background, of, of my, my bloodline, but for the simple fact being I should know better. It's like I'm, I'm raised in that, in that scene. I'm mm. raised in that. Why don't you teach me better? Yeah. And it's, we're not getting that. And the thing is, that the police, a lot of, a lot of black fellas that are, that are police, they, um, they use that to their advantage. They use so, that. So that you're saying it makes no difference. Makes no difference. For me personally, that's my personal opinion, and I'm, I'm sure you've got a, a different opinion, Danny. Well, I, I agree with the sense of when someone puts on a uniform, often they're just blue then. Yep. They're yeah, blue. Exactly. And, and, and that's what that, that's nothing how else I matters. See, that's how they are. But, I mean, I just want to go back to their re uh, representation. Um, what do we need to do? I mean, we, we want to see people of colour in the media. What's wrong if we want to see them in the police force to, be, to make the change from within? Okay, that, that's yeah. a good. That, it, look, it, it'll it'll happen. Yeah, but it has to be there has to be training behind it. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Mm. What the police are doing is they're hiring they're hiring people that are black people, right? They, they're thinking that's going to solve the problem within the community within the black community. It's a bunch of bullcrap. Mm. It never will. There has to be training it's that comes. Um, a privilege, you know, like depending on what what country you live in, what area you live in, you know, like is it, there's a big difference if you live in an, in an affluent area or you live in a. In a, in a in the ghetto, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. This is, is a big difference the way that you're treated by the police. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, I mean, a, a friend of mine uh, who's black, he had an expensive car, and eventually he sold it and bought a cheaper car. And I said to him, "Why? Well, why did you? You had this awesome car. Why did you?" Say? He said, "I was sick of getting pulled over by police. He's constantly pulled over by police. I mean, I've been stopped by the police well over a hundred times. Yeah. Often questioned, searched, you know, and uh, sometimes like false." Uh, false arrests or whatever, like I they try and pin stuff sense. on you and stuff, and it's you know, it's frustrating. And and um, and my only self defense is I keep myself squeaky clean, like squeaky clean. And even though I keep myself squeaky clean, and I know that like my car and my motorbike are in perfect condition, and I, I, I obey all the rules and everything like that, I still get harassed, and I still you know, it's it's frustrating, and it's like it's just. You know, it affects you emotionally. Oh, you know, yeah. it's it's yeah. I don't have my license. It's oppression. I mean, I gotta I gotta really take you back on what happened in America. You know, when they start looting their targets and uh, local businesses. I got some family who lives in Minnesota. Yeah. Far right no, groups no, were no, doing no, that. No, no. Remember, uh, we've Not seen black we've people. seen black brothers who and sisters who are do, involved with that. Yeah, yeah but who started but, it? But, it doesn't matter who said well, what we know is we see that in our mm. our own eyes. We're not saying we're not saying that there's we could always talk about yeah. conspiracy and, and taking yeah. it to the next level. You just no, see what we and, and footage and of it's and, un no, undisputed now, it's footage of those far families, right those family stuff. there. I don't know whether you have any families mm. in Minnesota, I, but I do have. Yeah, I have so family I've got, all yeah, across so America. I've got, yeah. I've got some families who were there who are literally been involved in this. And uh, I'm not saying uh, it's uh, and you, you cannot just justify a crime. If you want to take that outrage, you take it to the to the uh, to, to the council. You take it to the next level. Don't rob and don't loot. Don't bring and burn your local businesses. Those women, those people who work in those shops in Target, yeah. they are from the same community. They're from the Somali mm. community. They're from the Eritrean community. Mm. So if you want to take your outrage, go do it in the right way. Yeah, I agree. But, but, yeah, I but, agree. But, and, but, and, but there's no platform really. Yeah. There, there's a, oh, I see we coming from. Yeah. And I totally agree. 150 percent agree. But the thing is. There's no fair platform for a black brother to do that. Exactly. They get turned away so much. They if, don't. I was, if I was to go into a police station and try and make a complaint because of my background, I would get shut down really quickly.